Here I'm going to tell you a little bit about reptiles' success story and how they've become so well adapted to the terrestrial or land environment. We see some sea turtles here, recently hatched, making a run for the water here, hopefully not getting picked up by any predators or seagulls on their way there. So let's start with the history of reptiles, the origin and evolution. Well, first off, they arose from amphibians. So the earliest fossils is about 359 million years ago, small four-legged vertebrates with small teeth. Now it's important to make the distinction between a reptile and amphibian. So reptiles are cold-blooded, have a backbone, scaly skin, and lay eggs. In contrast to that, amphibians pictured here are cold-blooded. That's a similarity. They also have a backbone, but they have moist skin, they lay eggs near water, and they go through a metamorphosis during their life cycle. So remember, we're going to be focused more on the reptiles here. Don't get them confused with the amphibians. So, success of reptiles. Well, there's four important steps. Uh, we're going to focus on two in particular. One is the watertight skin, the keratin, which gives them their watertight abilities. Uh, respiration, they develop lungs. Excretion, they actually use uric acid, which requires very little water, so they can conserve water, so they're not wasting a lot of that. And the amniotic egg. A little quote here. It's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one most adaptable to change. So keep that in mind if you look here at reptiles. So water retention. Well, amphibians, example frogs, cannot be considered fully terrestrial because they lose too much water through their skin. Amphibians must stay moist to avoid dehydration, and their method of reproduction requires a moist environment. See that here with the little toad swimming in the water. Reptiles, though, have evolutionary adaptations that free them from the water. They're able to live much more on land. Now, of course, they still require water, but they don't have to be living in water. They can handle a much harsher and more arid environment. So that watertight skin. Terrestrial animals face serious problems of water loss as water evaporates through their skin. Modern reptiles have evolved a skin made of light, flexible scales that overlap to form protective, almost watertight skin that minimizes water loss. We see that here, and if you ever touched a snake, you might expect them to be slimy, but it's actually just those interlocking kind of scales there. And the main goal is to reduce water loss. Here we're adding the advantage of camouflage in both these cases, but really those interlocking watertight skin allows them to survive in these much drier regions. Watertight eggs also. Without a watery environment, both sperm and eggs will dry out. A reptile's fertilized eggs need a moist environment in which to develop. The amniotic egg solves this problem of a reptile needing a moist environment to develop. So you have that harsh outer shell, and you have that nice kind of watery environment on the inside, allowing for the embryo to develop uh, inside a dry sand here. But in its small microenvironment inside the egg, it has the water that it needs to be able to survive through its early stages of development. Watertight eggs, an amniotic egg contains both water supply and food su supply, and is a key to a reptile's success as a terrestrial animal. The egg's tough shell makes it essentially watertight, does not dry out, even in very dry habitats. Most reptiles, all birds, and three species of mammals actually reproduce by the amniotic eggs with shells, and the formation of amniotic eggs suggests that these three groups of animals evolved from a common ancestor. Now, when we say amniotic eggs, we might think of the ones we buy in the store, but realize that there's many different types. Some people may have been fortunate enough to see like robin's eggs, right? Sometimes their nests are located in areas near houses or developments. Um, that's another example of the amniotic watertight egg. But they come in all sort of shapes, colors, and ways to camouflage them, as ways to stand out. Um, each unique based on the individual species. Now the amniotic egg reptiles considered the first terrestrial vertebrates. The amniotic egg first evolved in reptiles, but also found in, as I said, animals and birds. I'm sorry, mammals and birds. Protection from the physical damage is the hard outer shell. This limits the evaporation of water, but still able to diffuse oxygen and carbon dioxide. We see here in our progression or cladogram, we see the development of the amniotic egg being fairly far along in the development process here. So relatively advanced animals. Continuing with this, we have the internal structure of the amniotic egg. Um, Amnion, which is the thin membrane that encloses the fluid where the embryo floats, okay, here by this kind of purpley grayish region. The yolk sac, which encloses the yolk fat rich food supply for the embryo, that's what the yolk is. Um, we have the uh, lactitilis, 
Alatimus, which stores water produced by the embryo. And then we have the chorion, which surrounds all other membranes. We see that located here is the chorion. Albumin is the protein in water for the embryo. So this is the albumin located right here. This is in part which, which makes eggs very uh, nutritious and why a lot of people eat them is because they do contain a lot of this protein and a lot of these good supplies, assuming they weren't fertilized. So the amniotic egg, the amniotic encloses the embryo with the watery environment, creating like a little pond is a way to think about it, that watery region within this hard protective shell. And this shell also protects the egg from being crushed, depending on what environment it may be in. Animals may be sitting on this, it might be buried in sand, it might be buried in a nest, so it's offering protection. What's interesting about the amniotic egg is the yolk sac contains the yolk, which is the developing food supply for that young embryo. This sac stores waste products from the embryo. So the um, leptilis stores the waste products. Because remember, we're in a sealed environment here. So we just can't have a way to just produce, you know, nutrients. We also need an area to put the waste products. Um, also allowing gas exchange. So while this is a hard protective shell, there's also carbon dioxide able to diffuse out, and oxygen is able to diffuse in. And there is an air space a little bit there, allowing the embryo to be able to, to basically um, breathe within a, quote, sealed environment. Blood vessels in the walls carry oxygen, carbon dioxide from the embryo. So remember, this is a living, developing individual. The amniotic egg, surrounded by um, the alumen, yolk sac, and electolis, is the membrane called the chorion. The chorion allows oxygen to enter the egg and carbon dioxide to leave. So that's a very important portion to allow that individual to be able to grow and develop. If you've ever seen a bird break through, and that's going to be able to breathe air, and they didn't just kind of get suffocated in that egg. They're allowed to exchange that carbon dioxide and oxygen. That last kind of picture here, uh, identifying some of the key parts uh, where certain things are located, a little different image here, just be able to kind of identify the main parts and also what their functions are for the importance of the amniotic egg, which led to the success of reptiles being able to make that jump from the watery environment to the arid, dry land environment.